Good morning. Welcome back to another video on the channel. So we have reached the semi-final stage of the final Grand Slam of 2024 at the US Open. First semi-final, we have American Emma Navarro up against world number two, Irina Sabalenka. And the other semi-final, another American with Jessica Pagula up against Karolina Mukova of Czech Republic. Following the exit of world number one, Igor Sviontek last night, we are guaranteed to have a new winner of the US Open, which is always fantastic for the sport. And just quickly before I go into previewing and predicting these two semi-finals, if you would subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. I am targeting to reach 500 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you can take a couple of seconds to subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic and support my journey onto hopefully working in the tennis media one day. So now moving on to predicting these two fantastic semi-finals, we have Arena Sabalenka up against Emma Navarro. Now, as I predicted in my previous video, I thought Sabalenka would dominate against Zheng, and that's exactly what she did, winning 6-1, 6-2. Zheng had obviously had a fantastic few months winning Olympic gold. Getting to the quarter-final stage of the US Open was a huge achievement for her, but I always felt like it was a step too far after what has been a very physically and mentally tough few months for Zheng. And up against Sabalenka on a fast hard court, who's playing as well as she is, it was always going to be an uphill task. And Sabalenka, you know, when she's serving and returning as she can, the ground strokes are following. She's by far and away, in my opinion, the best hard court player in the world. And I think, especially after the exit of Igor Sviontek last night, you have to say that Sabalenka on paper is a huge favourite to win this title now. She's on a 10 match winning streak. She dominated everybody in Cincinnati. She's cruised through to this stage at the semi final of the US Open. And as I mentioned there, I think the fact that she's got that winning experience now, you know, a couple of years ago, Sabalenka didn't used to perform her best in the semi-finals and majors. It took her a long time to get over that mental block and get over that final win hurdle. But now she's done that on a couple of occasions and done it again at the Australian Open early this year. Then, you know, Sabalenka's got that winning experience. She's in a fantastic head sport space at the moment. She seems very happy and confident on the court, playing with freedom, um, you know, constructing points incredibly well on the back of a serve and when she's doing that she's incredibly difficult to stop on a fast hard court we all know the ground stroke speed that Sabalenka develops can blow anybody off the court on any given day and that's exactly what she's done so far in this tournament and you have to feel like if Sabalenka can keep re reproducing that level of performance then it would take a superb effort from somebody to upset the clear favourite on paper now Emma Navarro is a player that I do feel like can bring problems to Sabalenka. And if you were going to beat Sabalenka, then Navarro's got the style to do that. I did predict it to beat Paula Badosa in the quarterfinal because Navarro's just a player that hits a very hard, consistent length. She doesn't give you any enforced errors. She really forces you to play well with her variety, her defence, her counter-punching ability. And she also plays a real craft on the court. You know, I feel like Tactically and technically, she's superb on pretty much every shot. You know, she always seems to play the right shot and play her best tennis in the biggest moments. She's very good at converting break points. Um, never gives up in a set. You know, she was 5-1 down in the second set against Paula Bedosa. Rattled off six games to take it 7-5. And I feel like having those abilities to overcome adversity, fight back in sets to, to steal them, is a huge weapon and could be key in this one. Obviously, defending against Sabalenka is incredibly difficult on a fast hard court you're going to need to hit a consistent hard length play with variety play with craft take pace off the ball at times try to attack at times and move Sabalenka side to side it's an incredibly difficult task but I feel like Navarro's not overawed by any task she's mentally very stable she handles the occasion she's very solid under pressure you know we saw that against Coco Goff when Goff won that second set she had all the crowd behind her Goff was defending champion, but Navarro, you know, she reset very well. She played a fantastic decider and thoroughly deserved to win that match. And I feel like beating Goff on Arthur Ashe, the defending champion, will have done a huge amount for her confidence and mindset going forward. And I feel like a lot of players going into a match against Sabalenka at the US Open are sort of beat before they step on the court. But I don't feel like that's the situation with Navarro. I feel like she'd be fully confident in her abilities and her tactical and mindset on the court to be able to overcome this huge task in front of her. I do still feel like she will need a poor serving day and returning day from Sabalenka to win this one. If Sabalenka serves and returns the way she can, then I don't see any person being able to 
sort of withstand that pressure and ground stroke speed that she follows it up with. But if Navarro can get into rallies and extend them and use the variety, use the craft, use the consistent depth, then maybe she can force the errors out of Sabalenka. And we've seen from Sabalenka in the past that when she does start to lose games and unravel, then it can go on a downward spiral very quickly. Um, and I think it's worth pointing out that last year, you know, Sabalenka was winning the final against Coco Goff. But when Goff switched her tactics up and started to stay behind the baseline, get balls back in court, push Sabalenka back, force Sabalenka to play, then she did unravel very quickly and she made a hell of a lot of unforced errors in those final two sets that saw Goff win that. And we know Navarro might not have the speed of Goff, but she's certainly got the physicality, she's certainly got the counter-punching and defensive abilities. And in my opinion, she should be watching that final between Goff and Sabalenka last year and just saw how quickly Sabalenka went downhill. So I feel like if Navarro can get into rallies early and maybe can nick an early break or and perhaps even win the first set, Sabalenka can be guilty of trying to overhit and trying to hit winners from improbable positions and that could be the way for Navarro to have success in this one. In terms of final prediction, I feel like Sab- Sabalenka will also have learnt a lot from that Goff defeat last year. You know, She became un- impatient, she had a lot of unforced errors that were un- unnecessary balls. The fact that she won the Australian Open this year will have given her extra confidence. The fact that she won Cincinnati so easily last month, again, will have given her a hell of a lot of confidence on a fast, hard court. And for me, she's a clear favourite win- to win this title now with Hula's left in the draw. And that, again, will improve her performance and confidence and concentration. That is her first opportunity to win the US Open and a huge one at that as well. If Sabalenka plays to the level that she can, I feel like she wins this match, and I'm going to go Arena Sabalenka to win this one in straight sets. But I am a huge fan of Navarro. I feel like it's a fantastic matchup of styles, and it'll be a test for Sabalenka, but one that I think she will overcome in straights. Moving on now to the second semi final between Carolina Mukova and another American, Jessica Pagula, who got a fantastic win last night over world number one, Iga Shontek, in straight sets. First off, just focusing on Karina Mukova. Now, I spoke about in my quarterfinal preview how much I was impressed with that performance against Paulini, and she followed it up that with another fantastic performance against the Brazilian Harad Maia to win again in straight sets. Mukova, in my opinion, is one of the best women's players in the world. I feel like technically she's excellent all round. She's arguably, you know, the best women's player in the world to watch, in my opinion, as an out and out tennis fan who likes to see variety and all different shots on display. Her movement is just exceptional. You know, on every surface, she just glides around the court. She never seems to have to really sprint. She always seems to be in position and reads the play incredibly well. Her backhand variety is special to watch, whether it's a single hand and slice, the backhand angles that she can create across court, the backhand down the line is a fantastic shot whether it's a rally shot down the middle to maintain length and depth and rush people for pace. She's serving brilliantly well. A forehand change-up is very impressive. If she needs to adapt a game and attack the net with real conviction, she's got real creativity and great hands around the net. A fantastic volleyer. We know she's had good success in the past with doubles. And she's just a player that when she's in full flow, she's a joy to watch. And if she continues the performances that she's shown so far, She's come through a very tough draw, you know, beating Naomi Osaka, beating Jasmine Paulini, beating Harad Maya, all in straight sets are incredible wins. And she must be in such a good state of mind at the moment and fully believe that she can reach this final and win it. And I certainly wouldn't rule Carolina Mukova out of winning this title if she continues to play at the level that she has so far. Jessica Pagula, as I mentioned, got a huge win last night against Iga Svantec to reach her first ever US Open final. And I feel like it could be a huge mental shift for Pagula. I think we've seen her reach the stages of Grand Slam's quarterfinals in the past and not produce the best in the biggest moments and not being able to get over that final hurdle to get in a position of winning a major title. To beat the world number one, Sviantec, is massive mentally and could give her the confidence to go on and win this title. And if not, go on to give her the confidence to win a title in the future. You know, Pagula's a player that's still developing, in my opinion. She's getting better with every year and I feel like you know she can break through and win a major title one day I feel like Pagula played well last night she was solid she used the forehand speed she used the, the server times but Shontek really lost that match herself you know she made 40 unforced errors in two sets 
a serve and forehand were very poor throughout. And it was just a very strange, poor performance from Shiontek that we're not really used to seeing. But you know, Shiontek's a player that usually constructs points very well. She backs up the serve well. She's very solid from the baseline. But last night, she was just a shadow of herself. And I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, Shiontek has had a very physically tough and mentally tough few months on the back of the clear cross save that she has. Exit to Wimbledon early. She didn't get the gold medal that she wanted at Roland Garros. Went out in straight sets to Cincinnati to Sabalenka, but she had looked very solid so far this week, and I predicted it to beat Pagula. But it was just a dreadful performance from start to finish from Shuntek. But you do have to give credit to Pagula, you know, to still beat the world number one in the quarter final of a major to be able to serve it, serve the match out in the way she did, was a fantastic performance and. This match is a great matchup. I feel like Mukov has got more variety and perhaps more weapons in terms of that real backhand slice, the variety in the backhand that I talked about, the ability to really attack the net and adapt her style to the way the match is going. But Pagula does come from this match on the back of a title in Toronto last month. She's got she got the backhand of the US crowd. She's got that win over Sviantec, which I think will give her the world of confidence. She does have more ground stroke speed, particularly on the forehand side, and arguably a better serve as well in a fast hard court. In terms of prediction for this one, neither player have dropped a set, so you can't really pick faults from either player. I do say this is a real 50-50. It's really a toss, a toss of a coin on who's going to win this one. I'm going to slightly edge towards Mukova. I feel like her movement and the ability to adapt during the matches use a variety could edge it and I've just been so impressed and I'm such a huge fan of watching Mukova that I'm going to go for Carolina Mukova to win this one in three excellent sets but I think it'll be a brilliant match and it's one I'm just thoroughly looking forward to watching but I'm going to go Mukova to win in three. So thank you for watching if you have enjoyed the video if you would like and comment on who you think will win the semi-finals I do always enjoy reading those and if you could subscribe to the channel that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.